What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Mike Rashid. Um, I got some questions about personal training, advice for trainers. First of all, I want to say this. I am a personal trainer. I love personal training. However, I didn't always love training. Um, when I started out training people, you start out at the bottom. You don't have anybody, so you got to... And yes, I started out in a corporate gym. I started out at Gold's Gym. Um, I I do recommend people starting out. When you're starting out and you don't have any, any clients, start out at a corporate gym. I'm going to tell you why. You learn what a lot of people don't think about, but you learn the business of personal training because it's a business if you're taking it serious. It's a lot more to it than just putting somebody through a, an exercise, a workout. So I learned the business of personal training. I learned how to do a proper assessment. Um, everything from A to Z, I learned it, you know what I mean? Uh, when I started out, you know, back then, the, the, the going rate was $65 per client, per session. So I was like, man, how am I asking somebody for $65 for an hour at a time? Like, I can't do that. But I learned, I see the value in it and the importance of it. It's life-changing. And uh, I can ask for $1,000 now <laughs> with no problem. But anyway, uh, so I started out at Goals, and uh, not having any clients, you know, I had to work the shittiest hours. I worked a lot of hours, and I had to take whoever they would give me. You know, I was desperate for clients, and any any anybody starting out can attest to that. That's how it is. And uh, you know, you're dealing with people who personalities don't mesh with yours. People who are lazy. People who don't want to be motivated. You know what I mean? Uh, people who don't show up for appointments, you know, you get the, you get the, you, you got to take the good and the bad when you're starting out. But um, as you continue to grow your business and the people who do hang in there and stick with it, and you you treat them well and you give them the highest quality service that you can possibly provide, they will become your advertisement, and you will get other business from them. People seeing their gains when they go train with their friends, their friends will be. Just blown away with how strong they are now you know what i mean and they want to see well how'd you get like that and they're going to come to you but that's one thing i did um i worked at a corporate gym first i took whoever they would give me until i was able to pick and choose who i wanted to work with and then i went i left the gym and went independently and so i worked work that's when i went to metroflex and started doing my thing as an independent uh trainer which is a million times better once you've built up your, your business properly and your clientele because you're making double the money you were making. Sometimes more than double the money you were making when you're working at a gym because the gym, what well, goes gym, um, you only get paid 35% of what you charge people, but you can work your way up to 50%, but that's it, it's a cap. And it's like, it's very disparaging, it, it doesn't, when there's a cap on what you can make, there's no incentive on working harder. So it's a necessity for progression to, you know, leave. You know, you put in your, your two weeks notice and go to a, uh, uh, an independent gym and take your clients with you. Okay, so I feel like you should crawl before you walk. I also feel like once you're at an independent gym, your education should not stop there just because you don't have somebody breathing down your neck for certifications, you know. I got my first certification before I started working at Gold's Gym, which was NASM, NASM, which is probably one of the, the most recognized certifications. Do I feel like it's the best? No, I don't. Um, I can always tell when somebody just got their NASM certification because they're doing all the, the, the curls, standing on one leg and all of that BOSU ball stuff, you know what I mean? The rehabilitation stuff, but I, have, I see people, anyway, I ain't gonna talk about that right now. But anyway, uh, I feel like your education shouldn't stop, so after I was an independent trainer I still was furthering my education and and my profession you know I went on and got uh John Wellburn has the CrossFit football certification I went and did that um it's a two-day course uh it's, it's, it's dope it's a strength and conditioning certification which was my pretty much my expertise and my background and then I went on and did CT Fletcher's master plan certification which to me is the best one that I've obtained so far um, and I plan on getting more, even though I'm not training people uh, in the gym all day, every day anymore. So take your craft seriously. Um, 
Don't take, listen, you need insurance, you need certifications, you need all of these things when you're trying to become an independent trainer because first of all, you need insurance. It's not expensive, but the minimum is like a million dollars of insurance. And if you, per, you gotta think about this. You gotta think about the gym that you're trying to work in. An independent gym is not usually not a lot of money behind it. It's somebody's blood, sweat, and tears and their life's work to open up this gym. And if you hurt somebody while training, because it can happen. When I worked at Goals, I was handing somebody a dumbbell and dropped it on their foot and broke their foot. I felt like shit, you know what I mean? Injuries can happen, and I've seen worse injuries than that. If somebody, somebody, an injury can put a gym out of business, an independent gym out of business. That's something that you guys got to think about. That's why you need insurance. Don't go risking that for some gym owner, you know what I mean? Take your craft serious. And when you're insured and you're properly certified, it shows that you take pride in your craft and it's important to you. So don't look at personal training as just some easy job where you count counting reps. You won't make it like that. Personal training is a very rewarding job. And I'm not talking about monetary because when you're changing, when you're helping empower people and helping these people change their lives, there's nothing better than that. That's why I still love and train. I, I still love training people to this day. When I have the time to train, I do it. I help people in gyms all the time. Uh, uh, there's times that I'm in various gyms in different states and guys come up to me like they're fans and if they haven't, I, if anybody that's met me in a gym, my, one of my first questions is, have you trained yet? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I might invite you in to train with me. So, you know, I love training people. I love helping people. I love showing people how strong they are because a lot of y'all don't realize how strong you are and that's the beauty of being a trainer when you've trained so many people and for so long you know the body you know what I mean I can tell when somebody can do a certain lift based on a, a number of things and but when I'm in my when I'm in the gym that's my zone I, I see it I know it I'm focused in and I can see what you can do what you can't do and I'm gonna push you to your limits to your capabilities but anyway, I'm getting all off, off tangent, but, excuse me. But that was one of the questions somebody shot at me. Should they work at a corporate gym or independent? I say do both. Start out at a corporate gym just to learn the basics. You know, uh, learn how to sell training because it is a business. It is a sales job. However, it's a very important job because the service that you are providing, that you are selling is yourself. And these people, you gotta think about this, man. You should be honored that these people are trusting you to put their hard-earned money into your hands to guide them to a healthier them, to a better looking them, okay? So take that very serious. Don't bullshit people. If you, and it happens, people don't get along, personalities don't mesh, don't take their money. Let them know in a respectful way, I don't think that we're a good fit. I've done it and I'll continue doing it. If I'm not gonna waste anybody's time or money, and don't do it you know what I mean take your craft seriously and um, you will be successful you can be successful this is a the most rewarding I've done I've had a lot of jobs I've done a lot of things for occupation and this is by far the most rewarding because you have a huge impact on people's lives it is what it is you know so uh, take your craft serious get your proper credentials get your insurance get all of that good stuff and don't fuck around be, take that shit serious be, be professional on the job you know, one thing, one, a dream of mine is to get personal trained to a status to where uh, is recognized by insurance companies to be insured as a treatment. Because I'm gonna tell you this, there's no reason, like I've seen dramatic changes in people and people that I've trained and people that other people have trained, like life changing for the better, okay? So an insurance company will insure somebody will cover an operation like a gastric bypass or what have you. And I'm not knocking that. You know, we have developed the technology to do those things. So great. Let's use it as a tool. However, that shouldn't be it. Okay. If I take somebody that's obese and, and have them do this surgery, it loses the weight. We, they don't lose the weight. We took the weight out of them. What have they learned? Okay, granted, they have a second chance, they have another shot. But I know, I know of people who have had to have that surgery multiple times because they don't learn their lesson. They keep gaining the weight back. Now, 
if I take you and you lose, I help you. I'm not going to say I made you lose because I'm just pointing out things for you to do. And I'm helping you, holding you accountable. And you lose 100 pounds, 80 pounds, a, a, a life-changing amount of weight. What ha what's happened? Not only did you lose weight, but you've gotten healthier in the process. A surgery removing fat doesn't make you healthier. You understand? But when you're exercising, moving your body properly, and putting the proper things in your body, you are becoming healthier. That's one thing you're gaining. Another thing you're gaining, you gain knowledge, wisdom, and understanding on how to get there to where if you do fall off a little bit, you know how to dial it back in. Okay? And chances are when you've worked for it and you dieted for it, you're not going to fuck it up. You know, you know what it took to get there. You become a whole new person. So, um, personal training, one day I would love to see it in, as a, a medical service that can be insured. However, personal trainers, you need to, you need to have your shit together. You need to take your craft extremely serious because this is a very uh, a serious job, in my opinion. It's not just counting reps, you know. Honestly, it, it's not, you know. I, some people just want a trainer for vanity purposes to look good, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's great, you know what I mean? That's a service, a valuable service. But for the most part, people are doing it to get healthier. It, it helps with your mental health as well as your physical health. And I feel like it's something that should be insured and if we us personal trainers take our craft serious and do the best job possible provide quality service maybe one day we can get it there it's a profession it's a new profession you know so uh hopefully in the, in the near future we can get it to that point but anyway that's my advice on personal training i love being a personal trainer you know like i said the most rewarding job i've ever had so um yeah, so that's that's my route. That's what I've done. So um, y'all go ahead and uh, take your craft serious, all right? Ain't that right, Floyd? Yeah, that's what's up. All right, y'all. Peace.